Hey everyone, so uh, thanks for joining us here today. Uh, we, I think, uh, I hope you are having a wonderful uh, conference so far. So today uh, we will be talking about uh, Kubernetes enhancements proposal uh, from Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes contributors point of view as well as uh, the release team's point of view. My name is Ryan Das. I work at uh, OneTrust as a senior site reliability engineer. I also contribute to uh, Kubernetes release team. Uh, and I am involved uh, from uh, 1.2029. Yeah, uh, hey everyone. Uh, my name is Sridham Venkatesh. Uh, I work at Big Bindery as a software engineer uh, where I'm building a platform as a service on top of Kubernetes. And uh, I'm also involved in the Kubernetes upstream community, mainly with uh, the release team. I've been part of the release team from uh, 1.29, and uh, I was leading the enhancement sub team uh, for the recent 131 release. All right, so uh, as Ryan said, uh, this talk is going to be about uh, Kubernetes enhancements proposals, what they are and uh, why we need them and how they work from both the perspective of developers as well as uh, folks who run the release team. So uh, this talk will be interesting for you if you uh, are someone who is looking forward to contribute to Kubernetes, both uh, from uh, the development side, like contributing code, as well as uh, doing non-code contributions, uh, such as the work done by the release team. So Kubernetes enhancements proposals, or KEPs, uh, are how uh, new features that go into Kubernetes are tracked. And uh, the a KEP is basically a design document. Uh, so if you want to add a new feature to Kubernetes, uh, you're uh, expected to write the KEP and uh, get it reviewed by uh, the tech leads and so on. So we're going to go through uh, like the history of how this KEP process came came to be and uh, how, like what all things uh, you would need to do uh, as a developer uh, building a new feature on top of Kubernetes uh, today. Yeah, so all the uh, caps reside in the Kubernetes slash enhancements repository in GitHub and each uh, cap for a feature has uh, a design document as well as uh, kep.yaml file, uh, you can ignore the typo, uh, it should be kep.yaml, and uh, yeah, it has some metadata about uh, which sig the kep comes under, I'll go into that uh, in a bit. The release team, what it does is, uh, release team uh, coordinates uh, the release of Kubernetes version every three months, so they, have like a bunch of sub teams and the enhancement sub team uh, make use of caps to uh, track which all new features are going into each release. So caps were introduced first in 2017 by Caleb Miles. Uh, this inspired by the RFC process followed by Rust as well as the Python enhancements proposal uh, process. So inspired by these uh, processes, we adopted a similar uh, guideline called uh, the Kubernetes Enhancements Proposal. Uh, so I mentioned the word SIG a bit before, uh, so I wanted to uh, give a brief description of what a SIG is. A SIG or special interest group is how uh, the entire Kubernetes code base and the development is uh, like divided into different areas. So each particular uh, area of Kubernetes has its own SIG. So if you're uh, someone uh, who is building the Kubernetes API, the Kube API server, then all that work would be, uh, all that work would come under Kube, uh, the SIG API machinery. Uh, so KEPs today uh, are uh, handled by, or governed by the enhancement sub-project of SIG architecture. So uh, what the enhancement sub-project uh, does is uh, basically define what the cap 
document should look like and what should be the process that is followed by the release team and the developers who are like contributing to Kubernetes. So we have a, a meeting every other week on Thursdays, uh, 10 a.m. Pacific time. So if you're interested in uh, learning about the work or contributing to improving the process, uh, you're welcome to join. And uh, this is basically what a KEP document looks like. Uh, this is the KEP template. So if you're proposing a new feature, you would need to uh, like open a PR which has a new kept document for your enhancement uh, and like write, uh, like write about your particular kept uh, on top of this uh, template. So all of these uh, kept currently reside in the Kubernetes enhancements repository and uh, this has like different directories where the kept are arranged uh, based on their SIG. So now we are going to look into the process of how you can uh, propose a new feature and uh, like work on your cap. So this first starts by creating issues in the Kubernetes slash enhancements repository. So you can see a bunch of issues are open in the repo right now. And uh, each of these are, uh, like each of these correspond to a particular uh, enhancement. And this is how a cap issue would look like. So there is a template for this uh, issue as well. So if you try to create a new issue, uh, you will already have like a template where you will be asked uh, different information. Uh, things like uh, which SIG this enhancement comes under and uh, the cycles, like the versions in which you are planning to uh, like ship your enhancement. All right. So. Uh, and we're going to look at how uh, you, like all the different steps that you would need to do while uh, like proposing your enhancement uh, to Kubernetes. So the first thing that you would need to do is to uh, talk with a relevant SIG. So if the enhancement that you're uh, proposing uh, comes under the purview of, uh, let's say, uh, the SIG API machinery, then you would need to talk with the tech leads and the uh, SIG leads at uh, SIG API machinery, and uh, when you first create the issue, uh, you can, like you need to give the discussion link uh, in the cap issue itself, so that uh, folks who can, like whenever, whenever a new cap is created, we need to show that uh, you had uh, discussed this idea with a particular SIG, and uh, uh, like people are aware that this is a feature that is going into Kubernetes. So. This is usually a Google Doc or like a Slack thread. So first thing you need to do is to discuss this idea with the SIG and then uh, create the issue in the Kubernetes enhancements repository. So once you create the issue, you need to act. Uh, like you need to raise a PR which has the actual uh, kept document. So for that, you can use the kept CTL uh, command line tool to generate all the files uh, easily. So this is how it would look like. Uh, you can clone the enhancements repository locally, and uh, you can run uh, capctl like so. And uh, in the CLA, you can pass the different uh, information about the cap, like the title, and who is reviewing and approving your uh, PR from your SIG, and so on. So once you do this, it will generate a bunch of files. Uh, it will basically generate the cap template file that we saw, as well as a cap.yaml file, uh, which has like metadata about the Issue, metadata like the issue number which uh, SIGIT comes under and who is reviewing and approving the cap and so on. So once you have that, uh, the like before you opt in your, so before you add a cap to a particular release, one thing that you need to uh, complete is the PRR questionnaire. So PRR stands for production readiness review. And this is something that every cap goes through before it is uh, shipped with the Kubernetes release. So the PRR questionnaire comes at the end of the cap template. Uh, it is basically a list of questions which uh, asks uh, and makes sure that uh, the feature that you are proposing uh, doesn't break anything that is already there in Kubernetes, and that you have like a plan to test your feature and like how how would you like, do the rollbacks if. Uh, something needs to be uh, rolled back once it has been shipped and so on. It also uh, 
asks you questions about the metrics, observability, and how you're planning to handle all of that for your particular cap. So you need to uh, answer all these questions, and this needs to be done for every uh, time the cap graduates from uh, a particular uh, level of stability, like alpha, beta, and stable. So each cap, uh, when you first create the issue, will be in a, a status of uh, provisional, and then uh, once the SIG leads have reviewed the cap and uh, agreed that the change can be made and uh, basically approved your peer, uh, cap, you can, uh, like the status can be changed from uh, provisional to implementable, and then uh, it will be in alpha state. In the first uh, release cycle, it is shipped. So th there are exceptions to this, but then uh, for most of the caps, it goes through alpha, beta, and then uh, it spends a couple of cycles in alpha and beta state before it is moved to uh, GA. So in the GA, uh, Stability status, it is uh, turned on by default. Usually, it is turned on by default in beta. But in the alpha stage, mostly it has a feature gate, which you need to enable if uh, your enhancement needs uh, needs to be uh, enabled in the Kubernetes. Uh, it, it will not be turned on by default, and you need to pass a feature gate in order to uh, enable your uh, enhancement or feature. Yep, and uh, once you have... Uh, Written your entire uh, enhancement proposal document and uh, like gotten uh, like approvals from uh, the SIG leads. You need to opt in a cap for a particular release. So let's say I have a feature that I want to uh, that I'm working on, and I have a cap, and I need to ship it in the alpha state in the upcoming 1.32 release. So that's where the release team comes in. So I want to, uh, if I want my feature to be shipped with uh, 1.32 release, I need to uh, go through a production uh, readiness review approval process. Uh, so basically, what will happen is I, I'll talk to my SIG leads, and they will add uh, the lead opted in label. So this is a tag that is added in the GitHub issue. And if that tag is added, this particular enhancement will be added to the uh, enhancement tracking board, which is used by the release team, which we'll see in a couple of minutes. So once that is added, uh, the PRR team, uh, the people who are doing the production readiness approval, they will go through all these steps and make sure that all the production readiness, uh, the questionnaire is filled properly. And if there are any uh, questions that they have, they'll uh, get back to you. And uh, at that stage, it can be, uh, the cap can be approved or it can uh, like go back, like you'll have to go back and then work on it again uh, based on what the PRR approvers uh, based on their comments. So once this is done, uh, uh, what happens is, uh, yeah, basically what, uh, before this happens, like the SIG lead has to add the lead opted in label to your cap issue. And you can see how uh, uh, the infra bot will add this issue to the tracking board automatically. And uh, once this is done, the PRR approvers will go through your cap and uh, basically make sure that your enhancement won't break anything in Kubernetes. Uh, as it exists today, and uh, basically give you the uh, green signal to start working on the actual code implementation. So once this is done, uh, this needs to be uh, done before the enhancements freeze, which Ryan will talk about more in a minute. Uh, after this, uh, basically your enhancement is approved and is tracked for the release, and uh, you can continue working on the code implementation uh, PRs and get everything merged before all the deadlines. So we have a bunch of deadlines, uh, the enhancements freeze, uh, before which you need to get your enhancement, uh, like the design document ready and approved, the code freeze before which you need to get all your code PRs merged, and the uh, tests and docs freeze before which you need to merge all your tests and uh, the documentation changes to the Kubernetes website. Yeah, so, yeah, uh, let's talk about uh, caps from uh, Kubernetes release team's perspective. But before starting on that, uh, I want uh, to take you th uh, through the release cycle. So we uh, release th uh, three times uh, in a year. Every release takes around uh, 15 weeks. Uh, 
to 16 weeks in some cases. So there are uh, two weeks, one to two weeks breaks, uh, I mean, break between uh, each uh, release cycle. And delays can happen, and, uh, and it basically changes the release cycle a bit. Uh, also, it impacts the following releases. So uh, there are multiple release phases that we follow. So from week zero to week four, uh, we uh, basically assemble the team as well as uh, collect enhancements and then uh, at the end of week four we uh, do an enhancements freeze and uh, during this time we also release uh, the alpha releases and uh, till uh, at, I mean till uh, week 12 uh, we uh, do I mean at the end of week 12 we do a code freeze and uh, during this time, we uh, continue uh, to cut beta releases. And at the ad end of week 13, uh, we do test freeze. And uh, in this week, we cut a new branch as well as uh, cut new RCs, release candidates. And at the end of week 15, we uh, applied apply release code thaw, which is basically after this time, uh, any PR needs to be merged to master branch instead of uh, the release branch, I mean current release branch. And after that, feature blogs uh, starts to, uh, I mean, get posted. And yeah, let's talk about the responsibilities of enhancements team. So during week zero, uh, enhancements lead basically uh, creates the enhancement uh, tracking board. So, and uh, the lead have to, uh, I mean, create a job in uh, Prao as well, so that uh, as and when uh, an enhancement is marked for opt-in, uh, it gets added to the enhancement board uh, so that it can be tra tracked. And we uh, find issues from uh, previous release, uh, releases that have uh, graduated to stable and check if the cap uh, status is implemented. If it has, uh, then close the issue. If it has not, then ask the issue uh, creator to uh, update the status. And we find issues uh, labeled uh, lead opt-in and remove uh, the labels basically for, I mean, as uh, new enhancements uh, must be explicitly uh, opted into each release. And during week one, we, uh, so initially we st uh, spend, uh, I mean, send an uh, email to Kubernetes ma uh, dev mailing list with uh, a call for enhancements. After that, uh, new enhancements can be proposed. And uh, we also say, I mean, we also uh, share how, how to opt in uh, the caps in current release. We also verify uh, issues, uh, I mean, all the issues have uh, Kubernetes slash Kubernetes PRs associated with it so that uh, we can track it uh, for the current release and it is critical for our uh, enhancements freeze as well as code freeze. So yeah, uh, PRR, production readiness review, uh, Sriram talked about it. We also, uh, so it's basically a, a questionnaire uh, that Authors needs to be uh, filled. Uh, needs to fill. Uh, a cap owner basically a request for a new PRR when uh, the cap is ready to move to implementable state uh, from provisional. And every time the cap uh, graduates to a new uh, new stage, uh, a new PRR approval is required. So. Uh, in the week of enhancements freeze, so we clean up all the enhancements issues by removing uh, release milestone. And uh, so by doing a slash uh, milestone clear, uh, it basically clears up uh, the milestone for the cap. Uh, and on freeze day, we send an email to Kubernetes dev uh, mailing list that uh, the freeze has uh, happened successfully. and. Uh, we also share upcoming key dates. So after that, people can uh, 
choose for uh, exceptions. So suppose they have some enhancement that needs a little more time uh, to go in. Uh, so they uh, basically needs to send an email to uh, Kubernetes release team saying uh, we need an exception. So we review it and uh, we uh, make it possible. And post enhancements freeze. Uh, so any enhancements removed from the milestone uh, should, so as I said, uh, we need an enha enhancements uh, exception. So we also stay on top of uh, issues uh, continuously, monitor uh, them twice, uh, I mean every week or twice a week, and look for uh, attached PRs if they are uh, ready to merge uh, or not. So we also monitor issues that are at uh, risk for code freeze. So if uh, there are some issues which uh, can't uh, make, to make it to uh, code freeze, then it needs to be moved out of the current release release cycle. And before code freeze, so uh, we basically go through uh, all, I mean, uh, before code freeze, every PR needs to be in a merge ready state, as well as the uh, associated tests and docs PRs. So this is, uh, a, this is a mandatory uh, step that we follow. Week of the uh, code freeze. So enhancement shadows basically reached, uh, I mean, reach out to all the cap authors uh, before code freeze and uh, to get the latest possible uh, update from about the uh, about the cap, we also work with uh, communication team uh, to develop and uh, to find out major themes for official uh, Kubernetes uh, blog post. Yeah, code freeze party. So it's not really a party. So we uh, send invite uh, on the day of enhancements freeze uh, and uh, to and invite all the enhancement shadows, uh, emirators, advisors, and release team leads. And during a code freeze party meeting, we review all the caps. Uh, I mean, for a final status. Uh, I mean, and we decide if, uh, we see if uh, it can uh, go, I mean, it is good for code freeze readiness. Uh, if an enhancement uh, does not meet the requirements for, uh, for the code freeze, we notify the cap authors. And uh, they, they can, after that, they can uh, raise an exception as well. So uh, yeah, that that was about the roles and responsibilities from uh, enhancements team, and uh, we have a shadow program as well in Kubernetes release team. Uh, so it's a mentorship program with a structured contributor ladder. Uh, this is an initiative to uh, bring in new contributors with zero Kubernetes experience. So they uh, are required to have uh, curiosity to uh, work as a shadow uh, in Kubernetes release team. So currently the shadow application is open. If you want to apply for the uh, shadow role, you can uh, scan the QR code. So as uh, the shadow uh, program is, as I said, the shadow program is a contributor ladder. Uh, it goes through shadows to uh, role lead and then uh, eventually release lead and then emirators advisor. So it's a good way to uh, contribute in Kubernetes release team. Uh, conclusion, let's talk about the key takeaways. So caps are very important in uh, Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes ecosystem. So we basically, I mean, using caps, uh, everyone can track what all uh, features are going into the new Kubernetes version, be it uh, any updates, uh, I mean feature updates or deprecations. So Kubernetes release team repo is uh, the central repo for all the enhancements that are going in, uh, in current release as well as uh, in past releases. The KIP process brings uh, structure to 
how new features are uh, added and reviewed uh, and helps both contributors and reviewers. So there are a few links that we have provided. You can, uh, I, I will share the slides. You can go through uh, previous KubeCon talks related to KEP as well as uh, the Enhancements Tracking Board, uh, Enhancements Handbook, and there is a KEP list that we uh, continue to up update in Kubernetes.dev. You can uh, go through that as well. And with that, our talk comes to an end. Uh, if you have any question, we are ready to answer.